Hi, uh, this video is about an introduction to, to statistics. So um, this uh, video aims to define basic terms in statistics, identify different sampling techniques or sampling methods, and uh, use browsoft.com in finding a reliable sample size. So common terms used in statistics, unang-una yung tinatawag na population. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng uh, target population or population itself? So population refers to the entire, lahat, entire particular group of people that the researcher identifies to study. Okay? So kung ano yung uh, population na gustong studyhan na or pag-aralan ng isang um, researcher, then that's the target population. But um, sometimes yung target population ay um, medyo marami. No? Sometimes pag sobrang dami na nung population at hindi kayang um, isali lahat ng researchers, then that, that's the time na kumukuha lang ng part ng population ang researcher. And that's what we call sample. Okay, sample. So, sample is a part of population that is included in the study and where the information in research comes from. So, again, a sample is taken from the target population. So, meaning, mas malaki yung population and then, parang subset lang yung sample. So, whatever is the result, okay, statistical result, uh, dito sa sample na ito, that can be used to generalize na ito rin ay tama, is true to all uh, the people in the population, to all elements in the population. Okay? So, yun ang nangyayari sa research. Target population, sample. Example. A survey on television viewers was done to determine the rankings of television networks in the Philippines. 200 television viewers in 10 selected malls were interviewed. From this given situation, ano ba yung population natin? Again, a survey on television viewers was done to determine the rankings of television networks in the Philippines. Okay, so therefore, the population um, refers to the television, lahat, television viewers in the Philippines. Okay? So, the TV viewers, television viewers in the Philippines, lahat yan. So, yun ang target population natin. But when we say sample size, kasi masyadong marami yung TV viewers in the Philippines, so it's not possible for the researchers to interview all of the people in the Philippines. Okay? So, uh, kukuha ngayon ng sample. So, when we say the sample, ito lang yung i-interviewin or in-interview. So, that's 200 television viewers in 10 selected malls. Right? So, 200 TV viewers um, in 10 selected malls. Right? So, ano yung tinatawag nating sample size? So, what's the sample size in this given situation? Um, well, Ang in-interview, 200 lahat. So, the sample size, uh, denoted by small n, the sample size is 200. Okay? Kasi 200 TV viewers were interviewed. Ngayon, let's uh, talk about the research application. Sa research naman tayo. Sa research, may uh, part ng uh, research paper na tinatawag na methodology. This is very important. Research methodology, usually, um, nasa chapter 2 siya ng thesis, ano, or second part ng isang research paper. So, research methodology refers to your detailed description of your procedure, instrument, and participants. This includes your sampling procedure, that is how you selected the participants in your study. So, ano bang ginawa mo sa research mo. Paano mo ginawa? Paano mo kinandak ang study? Anong research instrument ang ginamit mo? Gumamit ka ba ng questionnaire or ng interview guide or ng um, form to record your observation and so on? Okay? And also your participants. Ilan ba yung in-interview mo? Um, 
Ilan ba yung sample mo? Paano mo ba sinelect yung mga samples mo sa study? Okay, so that's the sampling procedure. So, that is included in your methodology. Ngayon naman pag-usapan natin yung mga sampling techniques na ginagamit in choosing uh, your samples. Okay, so na-mention ko kanina, kapag masyadong marami ang population, yung target population, ang ginagawa, pumipili lamang ng iilan galing sa population and we call that sample. Okay, uh, ginagawa yan to save money, time, of course, and energy, ano, uh, ng isang researcher. Kasi pag, uh, lalong-lalo na pag impossible to cover all the population in uh, the target population, ano, so, uh, pumipili lang ng part ng population which we call samples and hindi basta-basta pumipili na kung sino-sino lang ano? um, we use techniques okay? method we call that sampling technique or sampling method so sampling technique is a method used to determine which elements are to be included in the sample Example, we use simple random testing, uh, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, multi-stage sampling, convenient sampling, meron din tinatag na quota sampling, and purposive sampling. So, these are examples of sampling techniques. So, i-discuss natin yan um, isa-isa mamaya. When I say simple random sampling, ito rin yung tinatawag na fishbowl method or yung lottery sampling or lottery method. In this technique, each member of the population is assigned a number written on a small identical pieces of paper. So, halimbawa, meron kang, let's say, 100 names okay, in a list. So, each name is assigned a particular number. Let's say, yung una, of course, number 1, yung pangalan number 2, hanggang sa number 100. And then, ilalagay mo yung mga numbers na yun, um, in a bowl or, or any um, container and then of course mix mix mo and then bubunot ka halimbawa kailangan mo ng 30 samples okay halimbawa halimbawa lang 30 samples so bubunot ka ng 30 uh, paper pieces of paper and then yung number na naka-assign doon hahanapin mo dun sa list Ng, ng population mo. And those 30 na nabunot na kinu kinuha mo randomly, that, uh, that comprises or yun ang bumubuo ng samples mo. Okay? So, the desired number of samples is drawn from the box one at a time. Okay? So, halimbawa, unang bunot. Uy, si ano, Ramos. O, oh, number one. Pangalawang bunot. Okay? Hanggang sa makompleto mo yung sample mo. Okay, so, the lottery is an example of a simple random sampling. Okay, simple random sampling. Next, we have um, systematic sampling. Okay, systematic sampling. This is done by first assigning numbers to each element of the population. Ganon din, no, kagaya nung sa simple random sampling. So, each name in the list or each element in the list are assigned numbers. Okay, then selecting Ang, ang kaiba lang sa systematic sampling, we select every kth element in the population list. Ano ba yung kth element? Um, we compute for the value of k. Okay? So, the value of k is deter determined by the, uh, by the following formula. k equals n over n. Big N is the population size. And small n is the sample size. So, halimbawa, meron kang... Excuse me. Halimbawa lang, meron kang one, uh, 100 na population. And then, um, gusto mong kumuha lang ng, let's say, 20 na sample size. Okay? Halimbawa lang yan. So, your K is uh, 5. Alright? So, ang pipiliin mo ngayon, every fifth okay, element of your population. And then, you assign. Uh, first step niyan, you assign a number. Okay, you assign uh, you assign a number na, of course, naka-assign ka na doon, ano? And then, you choose saan ka magsisimula randomly. Uh, you may use uh, uh, number randomizers app. Okay, meron namang marami namang download randomizers. So, pipili ka ngayon ng kung anong first element mo. Halimbawa, napili mo ay 11. Okay, so, yun ang first 
na i-consider mo. That's your first element in your sample. Then, your next element would be plus 5. So, that would be 16. And then, plus 5, that's 21. Plus 5, that's 26. And so on, hanggang makompleto mo yung 20, okay? 20 na kailangan mo. Alright? So, that's systematic sampling. Let's have another example here. Use systematic sampling method to choose 200 participants from a population of 2,568. Ang pipili natin 200. That's our sample size. Yung population ay 2,568. So, unang-una, you choose any number from 1 to 2,568. So, sabi niya, hmm, I choose 1,083. Okay, so, eto yung simula. So, dito ka magsa-start. So, the researcher, again, pwedeng gumamit ng mga randomizers app dito, ha? Hindi kailangan na magtatanong ka sa, sa ibang tao. You can use randomizers app. Uh, search nyo lang number randomizer or randomizer app. Okay? The researcher needs 200 participants as sample. So, your K is equal to 200, 2,568. That's the population size. Divided by 200, your sample size. And that is 12.83. So, round, round off na yan, that's 13. So, meaning from 1,083 that you first cho chose, mag add ka lang ng 13. So, that would be your second sample. So, ito yung first, si Joy ko. Then, plus 13, that would be 1,096, si Maricar Lopez. Plus 13, so 1,109, si Elias Subel. So, these are the first three um, people or elements in your sample. Hanggang sa makompleto mo yung 200. Okay? So, those are assigned in 1,083 plus plus 13 yan, okay? Hanggang sa makaabot ka dun sa towards the ending kasi 2,568 lang yan. Andito ka na sa 2,565. Pag nag plus 13 ka, lalagpas na siya ng 2,568. So, ibig sabihin, i-continue mo lang dun sa pinakaumpisa. Okay? So, plus 13, babalik ka sa pang 10. Okay, plus 13 ulit sa 23. Hanggang sa makompleto mo yung 200 sample mo. Okay? Again, that systematic, systematic sampling method. So, ibig sabihin, itong mga tao na nandito, yon ang i-interviewin mo. Sila ang i-interviewin mo dahil sila yung included sa sample mo. Okay? Again, sampling technique systematic random sampling next one we have stratified sampling ito naman samples are obtained by dividing the population into strata or groups okay if the desired sample size is 50 and there are 10 strata then samples are taken proportionately from each stratum the bigger the stratum the more samples are taken from it um example nito halimbawa uh, if you if you want to conduct a research in a school, so different grade levels, ano, may grade 7, may grade 8, hanggang grade 10, or pwede hanggang grade 12. So, if you are going to group them into grade levels, those are your strata already. Okay? So, kung kukuha ka ng 50, yung sample size mo ay 50, um, it should be proportionate to the number of population in each grade level. So, mamaya ipapakita ko as an example. Okay. Uh, here it is. So, complete the table by giving the appropriate sample size of each stratum. So, we have here freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. These are the population. Merong 540 na grade 7 or freshmen. Ang sophomores naman, 450 grade 8. Grade 9, 430. Um, grade 10, 380. The total is 1,800. That's the population. Denoted by usually big N, capital N. Yung sample naman, denoted by small N. Alright. Yung sample na kailangan natin is 150. Okay? Sample. Example lang din ito, ha? Okay, mamaya, tuturo ko kayo kung paano mag-identify kung ilan dapat ang sample size in a given target population. Mamaya yan. Okay? So, kailangan natin ng 150 or above this. Okay? Sample size. Mas malaki yung sample, mas mabuti. 
Okay, the, the better is the result um, kung mas malaki ang sample size. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, we are going to compute out of 540, ilan lang ang kasali sa sample dapat. Okay? And we are going to do that by using this method. So, if there are 540 freshmen and the total is 1,800 and we need 150 as our sample, ang gagawin natin, itong population ng strata or stratum, i-divide natin sa whole population, i-multiply natin sa sample size na kailangan natin. Okay, again, yung population, i-divide sa, sa total population and then i-multiply sa sample size. And our answer is 45. Okay. So, if we have, uh, you may use your calculators for this, ano? So, 540 divided by 1,800, that's 0. 0.3, times 150, that's 45. Exacto. So, meaning out of 540, mag interview lang tayo ng 45 chan. Ang sa sophomores naman, that's 440, 450 Divided by 1,800 times 150. Okay? Ilan ba yan? So, 450 divided by 1,800 times 150. That is 37.5. Oh, ma'am, bakit may 0.5? Paano? Ano gawin dyan? Isa at kalahat. 37 at kalahating tao. Hmm, hindi. Wala namang kasing kalahating tao. So, ang gagawin natin, kapag ka, um, kapag ka ganito, round up natin. Uh, round up. Okay, round up. Hindi round off. Kasi, let's say, um, halimbawa, kahit na 30, let's say, 37.2. Kung i-round off mo yan, um, it becomes 30, 37. Okay? Because this is below 5. Right? So, 37. So, ang mangyayari, kukulangin ngayon yung sample size mo. So, ang gagawin natin, kapag ka may decimals, kahit na anong decimal pa yan, kahit na anong number after the decimal point, ira-round up natin yan. Always round it up. Okay? So, magiging 38. Kasi mas mabuti ng so sobra tayo sa sample size kaysa sa makulang. Okay? Kukulangin. Alright? Kasi kung kukulangin tayo sa sample size, uh, invalid na yung result. Pero, kung sosobra tayo sa sample size, kung kailangan sample size, kung sosobra tayo dyan, it would be better. Okay? Mas mabuti ang result. So, remember to always round up. So, meaning, out of 450, 38 ang kailangan natin. And, so, um, yung sa juniors, pareho lang, 430 divided by 1,800 times 150 and so on, pati sa seniors. Next sampling technique is the cluster sampling. Cluster sampling. Um, this is sometimes called area sampling because it is usually used on large populations. Members of the populations are grouped into areas. And then, sample areas are selected by random sampling. Um, Mr. Example, Mr. Andres bought 50 boxes of tiles where each box contains 10 tiles. He wants to see if the tiles bought are of quality and free of, from any damage. So, he randomly selected 3 boxes. Okay? And check the tiles in each box. So, ito, this is an example of a cluster sampling. Next, we have multi-stage sampling. Ito naman, it is a combination of sev several sampling techniques used to obtain a suitable sample from very large population. Um, multi-stage sampling can be done by dividing the whole population into areas. Uh, cluster sampling yan, dividing it into areas, and then dividing each area into strata. Uh, stratified random sampling. And then, each strata, pag nakuha mo na kung ilang sample ang i-interview mo, you can use simple random sampling to identify who your participants will be. So, that's multi-stage sampling. 